Hello, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of The Broncast, the official Cal Poly Pomona Athletics Podcast. I am your host, Tyler Lobey, the Assistant Athletics Director for Communications here at CPP. This week's podcast features three student-athletes from the CPP women's soccer team. I sit down with senior Alyssa Larkin and juniors Jillian Ortine and Nicole Villarell. We discuss the student-athlete balance of athletics and academics. We relive a couple Sports Center top 10 worthy highlights, talk about favorite TV shows and movies, reveal some hidden flag football talent, and we wrap it up with some trivia to see how well Alyssa, Jillian, and Nicole know their own teammates. And, well, they don't really know their teammates at all. So without further ado, here it is, season two, episode three of The Broncast. All right, I am here with three CPP women's soccer student athletes as they prepare for tonight's game against Stanislaus State. By spending the morning here on the broadcast with me. Seems like a legit game day regimen, right? All right. Introductions. Let's start with Alyssa. Hi, I'm Alyssa Larkin. I'm a senior at Cal Poly and I'm majoring in electrical engineering and I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. All right. And Nicole. Hi, my name is Nicole Villarell. I'm from Long Beach, California. I'm a junior at Cal Poly and I'm a bio major. All right, and Jillian. Hi everyone, my name is Jillian. I'm a junior at Cal Poly and I'm a bio major and I'm from Corona, California. All right, well, thanks for being with me today. I know it's a, it's a busy day of, of prep, whatever you do during uh, on game days. Uh, this is not normal. So <laughs> thanks for being with me today. Uh, you, you ladies got off to a productive start in non-conference, in non-conference play with four wins, two losses. Uh, and you did all that after sitting around for a year and a half due to you know the season being canceled in 2020. Uh, how difficult was it to sit around for that long, then get your body back in shape for the season? I don't uh, let anyone start with that. I'll start. Uh, it was really difficult because being home, you're not, we're all from different places, so we can't really meet up and play with each other. So it was really hard for the whole year to get reps in and stay in shape. So that was probably the most difficult part, but luckily we were able to come back around a month early to play with each other. So that really helped us get back into it. Yeah, um, I think what was also interesting an interesting experience is coming back and having such a heavy load on your body pretty, you know, like quickly we were training a, a lot and I think a lot of us were kind of had to be so diligent about the way we were like eating, sleeping, or even hydrating just to prevent like any in injury that could happen at any time. So that was an interesting experience. I don't think any of us had to just like be fully prepared, like mentally and physically just at, so quickly. Yeah. And I'm just glad that when we did go back um, a couple of weeks earlier, we like slowly went like we didn't go hard right into it. We slowly built up to it <clears throat> because knowing like obviously coming back from like a year of not playing injuries are very like pr we're very prone to injuries. And so I was just very glad that uh, our coaching staff like eased us into playing and practicing. Absolutely. Uh, Alyssa, you've appeared in 40 career matches. You've made 29 starts. You've scored four goals. Dang. three in 2019 and one this season you matched the cpp women's soccer single season assist record in 2019 with nine assists and you have 10 for your career you've made an impact on the field um but you've also done outstanding work in the classroom you're you are only the third student athlete in cpp women's soccer history to earn the prestigious Casida Academic All District Award twice in a career. I'll attest to that award because they don't just give that award to anybody. You uh, you really have to be a great student, a, a incredible student, and also be a significant threat on the field. Uh, and so, and it's not easy being a student athlete because you are juggling academics, you're juggling soccer. Um, the time commitment it takes is incredible. Um, but uh, you know, 
just training and, and all the stuff that you got to do for soccer, you got to keep up on your grades. How do you do it? Especially when you, you know, throw traveling into the mix. Yeah. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really hard, but, uh, for me, I think just having mentors and when I first came into Cal Poly during our orientation, they helped me realize that when you are in season, it's important not to take a heavy load because you are traveling and it's really difficult. And then just trying to stay on top of your work. And for the most part, it's just doing the work, turning in your assignments on time and going to class and taking notes. That's really helped me um, stay on top of everything. It's really just all about effort for me. Electrical Electrical. engineering, right? Yeah. Okay. What uh, that's, I mean, that's not a normal, you know, degree that, that student athletes will take. Uh, What is it that, what is it about electrical engineering that you wanted to, why you wanted to get into it and what do you want to do with it when you graduate? So all through middle school and high school, it was noticeable that my strong suit was math which isn't normal for many people. Um, they look at oh, me it's, like it's crazy. really not. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone thinks I'm crazy, but I always lend my help in math and physics to my teammates. But because I was just a lot better in math compared to other s- subjects like history or English, um, that was just a degree that I was interested in. And I also have a, older cousin and my older sister also in engineering. So it was kind of on my radar and having those two girls to look up to really helped me and um, pushed me to choose that. And then after soccer, I'm still deciding if I want to go into my master's to play one more year or look to get a job somewhere. And where would that somewhere be if you had a choice? (laughs) Well, I'm not so sure yet. My family's in Vegas, um, so that would be preferred. But there are more opportunities in California. So I think wherever life takes me. What, I mean, what kind of jobs are there in electrical engineering? I, I'm not quite sure I know that. Um, well, I'm more interested in power and renewable energy. So I would like to get a job somewhere within that spectrum okay okay could never oh gosh (laughs) me neither (laughs) i i do i do statistics for for you know for a job and um yeah that it does involve math but a lot of times the computer just does it for me which is the (laughs) greatest part um last i checked you had a cumulative gpa of 3.87 is that still correct it might, like little, it might be a little, it might be like 0.02 higher. I don't know. So we'll go with 3.89. That, uh, that sounds a lot better. That's, that's awesome. So well done. Um, Jillian, you scored your first career goal in a four to two win over, over Cal state LA back on September 25th. Walk me through that play uh, and your thoughts. Once you saw the ball get past the goalkeeper and into the net. Okay, so my friend or my teammate, Krista Eberly, uh, was pressuring one of the defenders and I saw uh, she made a mistake with the ball and the ball um, was in the middle of the field. And so I took that opportunity to just drive at the players. Then I found Draki. Forgot her boss. Yep. Way boss. Yes. I found her and I passed the ball. And I knew that her and I have a good connection on the field. And so right away when I passed that ball to her, I knew she was going to play it back. Then I just slipped the ball in past the keeper and felt really good, honestly. Haven't scored in like three years because I tore my ACL uh, senior year of high school. And so that's one of the reasons why I didn't play my freshman year. And so it was just, it was really good to be back and get a goal in. I, I played soccer back in maybe seventh grade and I, I never scored a goal, but um, <laughs> yeah, scoring that goal, I mean, it, it, 
you got to then kind of, it, it, it must all be a blur after mm -hmm. that. Right. Yeah. Um, I was in that zone where I didn't even know where I was at and I was just so focused that I didn't even know how I scored the goal. I had to rewatch the film and yeah. That's awesome. Nicole, you scored your first career goal this season and you completed what I think was the most impressive sequence <laughs> of passing and ball movement that I've ever seen. Uh, Taylor Scott, she, she juggled, and I don't even know if you can call it that, but she juggled the, the ball up and over and through two defenders. And, and she was in the course. She launched it to the center of the field. And Jillian, you touched it. Uh, looked like it got away from you, but then you recovered it and you used your heel for like a no look pass back to Nicole. Then Nicole, you split two defenders yourself with a one-time shot that snuck just inside the left goal post. I mean, like what? I, I mean, <laughs> it, that was just, I, I was watching it in person and I'm sure people were watching at home, just like my mouth just dropped. And I was speechless. I mean, it was such an incredible goal and sequence of, of, of plays that happened right there. Uh, I mean, it should have been number one on sports center. Honestly, <laughs> I, I mean, I tweeted at them. I, I even sent an email to their assignment desk with this highlight. And I said, you guys got to take a look at this. Um, must've got buried. I don't know. Um, but uh, it, it's definitely the top play in the CCA uh, this season for sure. Uh, do you guys even realize how pretty that goal was as soon as it happened? Um, so right after it happened, I told Jill, like, that was all you. That was all you. Like, I saw, I remember Jill's past. I don't, like, honestly, when the, when Tay, when I saw the video and it was just like Tay juggling, I was like, what? Like, I really did not know what's happening. It's so fast in the game. So, I knew it was like really nice because of Jill's pass, but when it included Tay's part of the play too, I was like, wait a second. Like this was like a whole three player, like, I don't know. It was crazy. Yeah. That's I'll say crazy. Yeah. That's and why it went viral on Jillian's TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I posted it on TikTok and I got a couple of views. And like, I still have yet to download that. That's that shows my age right there. I've yet to download <laughs> that app and I probably should just to check, check out what's on there. But yes, um, that, it was just, that was, a, I mean, was, was it in your plans to just like, uh, Julie, was it in your plans to just use your heel to kick it back to her? I mean, or was that just like straight instinct? You knew she was back there and, and, and it just happened. Yeah, well, I saw the call like at the corner of my eye, and like I trust her, and so I just passed the ball. And I usually do that at practice, so it worked on the game. Yeah, it did. And then after the game, I went up to her. I was like, "Did you know I was going to pass you that ball?" She's like, "Yeah, I knew you were. Gonna, I I had a feeling." And I was like, "Perfect." <laughs> nice. No, I, I was that was an awesome goal. Um, so well done. Uh, moving on to this past weekend, I know you probably, you guys probably don't want to even remember what happened this past weekend. Um, kicking off conference play, you, you go scoreless with nationally ranked Sonoma state on their lawn until literally the last second. Then two days later, you lost, you know, what people would think is a winnable game at San Francisco state. How much of the loss against Sonoma carried over to the SF state game at all, if, if at all. Well, the Sonoma loss stung a lot for our whole team because first off we tried to fight it, but um, it was really heartbreaking putting in all that work, fighting for the whole game and just one second takes it all away, takes away all your hard work and you end up with zero points. And we really tried to come back and we brought the Fury to San Francisco State and we did score first, but um, it didn't end up working in our favor. So that hurt even more. And seeing ourselves at the bottom, I think will really 
fuel us for this weekend's games. Nicole, Jillian, you guys have any comment on that? Yeah, um, it was so. Um, it was this is me and Jills and I like first fall season, so just like feeling such <clears throat> such a heavy loss, like at the beginning of our season, like and just seeing like all of our teammates literally in tears. It was just. It was so, 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 so heavy and trying to lift each other up <clears throat> when you feel just as low was difficult. And then we kind of just tried to just take a moment and like move forward. But obviously um, it's, it's a little difficult to just like put that game completely in the past and then having to play the day, the, we had a day off and then like the next game, it, w it was a little difficult to just put all of our com complete focus on NSF, but um, yeah, like Larkin said, like we didn't get the the result we wanted. So it was a really, really difficult, you know, weekend just to come back home and be like, well, we put our all into, into Sonoma and tried to do our best in SF. And it's, it's just, we're trying to make it work. We're trying to, you know, like come back and actually just like, you know, get, get it in, like show everyone else, like that's, you know, we're way more than capable to being in the top. Yeah. I definitely think that this was a learning curve and like we need to go harder at games. And I just feel that this is kind of like a wake up call for the beginning of the season. Like we're not, even though we're predicted to be second place, um, we still need to play as hard and work as hard and play like we are the worst team in the conference because I felt like we kind of went into it knowing that we were really good after that play that we just did and like our record I just feel like we didn't really like I don't know how to explain it we just didn't come as prepared but yeah we did after we'll be better like today <laughs> when you when you watch your your team have a like a top 10 highlight the way you guys had you almost think oh that's that's just going to come naturally we're going to be fine and then and then you do i mean you fight well at sonoma state they're they're a very very good team they're a strong team and you you held them scoreless for as long as you did um and probably one of the most heartbreaking moments in sports is you know, a, a last second loss or, uh, you know, in, in soccer, when it's overtime, it's sudden death. As soon as they score a goal in overtime, someone scores a goal in overtime, one team wins, one team loses. That's the end of the game. Well, when you know you have one second left on the clock and all you got to do is keep that ball out of the net and you don't, it's, I, I mean, it's, uh, that's just something that, um, you know, I was heartbroken for you guys watching that. And, and so I can't imagine what you guys were going through, but the, best thing to know is that there's so much more season left. And so um, this first weekend of conference, it's, it's yeah, a little hiccup, but I know for a fact that you guys will bounce back and, and I know you guys are looking forward to tonight against Stanislaus and then also on Sunday against Cal state East Bay. Um, yeah. I, I mean, in seven of your first eight games, uh, you guys dominated on the offensive end of the field. Uh, you out shooting your opponents by a wide margin, but you only have, you know, a four and four record to show for how frustrating is the sport of soccer sometimes. It's really frustrating because our offense is incredible and our depth on our team is insane. And, just the amount of chances that we do create and sometimes it just doesn't go our way and we can't put it in the back of the net. And then other times when we're not disciplined on set pieces, it really gets frustrating after times, but that's what practice is for. And that's what we come back every week to try and get better. So that's what we did this week as well. And so we're really hoping that it'll show in these games weekends. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> our practices have, I mean, all the things that are, you know, like lacking in the game or things that we need to work on are things that we like focus on in practice. So it is 
frustrating seeing our result, but it honestly fuels us at practice and it like guides the way or like what we're training in. So it's, it is frustrating, but frustrating, but um, it's not something that we're just like giving up on, you know, like we, we come back and all of our mentality is just like, we need to focus on this. We need to focus on this. We watch the film, we look back and we just kind of like, we, we get dialed into it. So I, I really like that about this team is like, we don't just say, oh, like, let's, let's be better in this. Like, no, it's like, we're, we are going to be better in this. Like, let's work on it. So I think, um, although it's frustrating, we're, we're, we're really pushing through. Yeah, uh, I agree with both of them. Uh, one of the good things about our team is that we don't really dwell on the past. Like, I feel like um, Tuesday when we came back, everyone was ready to go and we did, we had a really good practice and um, we just forgot about our losses. That's good. I mean, as sports, you got to have a short memory and, uh, and as frustrating as maybe soccer is, I mean, you, you got to love the sport of soccer. Otherwise you're not, you know, on a college team playing soccer. So, um, so I, I know you guys will bounce back and I'm looking forward to, to seeing your guys' games this weekend and, and moving forward this season. Uh, Nicole and Jillian, we talked about Alyssa's major and what she wants to do with her degree when she graduates. What about you two? What do you guys want to do with your degrees when you graduate? So, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a bio major and I am currently interning at a hospital right now. So I am most definitely looking into getting into the medical field, not necessarily as a doctor. Um, I want to get my master's in what is called a physician associate. So, um, so yeah, that's what I'm working towards and definitely um, 100% going into grad school after I finish my undergrad. And um, I also have a finance minor. So that kind of gears towards um, my dad owns a business. So in helping in his business as well. So, um, so yeah, definitely going into the medical field after I graduate. Okay. Y'all are making me look bad here. Um, I'm not really sure like what I want to do. Um, as of right now, I'm still deciding. Obviously, I am a bio major. There's a bunch of different things I feel like you can do with that. But can maybe playing soccer after college would still be fun. Like maybe going overseas and just playing for like a professional team. I think that would be really fun. You don't need to know what you you need you want to do after college. You still got a couple years. Okay, that you you got some time to figure it out. You don't need to have your whole life planned out right now. So don't worry. <laughs> I didn't have my whole, I mean, I, I graduated college and I went, I was an emergency substitute teacher at, at my old high school until I like got a job somewhere. So, um, I, I, even though I knew what I wanted to do, it just didn't work out that way for until, you know, about eight or nine months after I graduated. So don't worry, you have time. All right. Changing gears. Alyssa, you were born and you grew up in Las Vegas. Uh, you have more athletic and academic honors from high school than any other high school student athlete in the history of the state of Nevada. Uh, obviously I don't know that for sure, but it's gotta be <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> but I uh, just reading your bio, you got academic awards, athletic awards, uh, you know, left and right. Uh, you were also a two year varsity flag football player. Tell me more about that. What position do you play? Um, so my junior year, me and my one of my soccer teammates, her name is Haley Neiman. Uh, the flag football coach came out to the, one of our soccer practices and told us about it. And obviously he wants to recruit soccer players. We're strong, we're fast, we're athletic. Uh, and her and I were just like, yeah, that sounds fun. And like, let's go, let's try out. And we said that if we made varsity, then we'd play. So, and we made it and it was a blast. I played running back and, um, oh, I forgot. <laughs> I played linebacker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on defense, I think. Yeah. 
Okay. And it was it was a lot of fun um, because about the winter time is kind of soccer off season, so it was just a time to have fun and play, learn about a different sport, and it made me appreciate football a little bit more, um, or American football a little bit more. Um, so yeah, I really recommend it. <laughs> After touchdowns, do they kick field goals? No, not for women's. We tried to push it. We tried to fight it because I would think that'd be right down your alley as a soccer player. You want to go kick those field goals after you score the touchdown. Yeah, we tried to add it, but they wouldn't because we're girls. Okay. Have you ever tried kicking a football through the uprights? Yeah, actually at one of our practices, we tried kicking it. And how'd that go? I mean, it is harder, but we were able to kick it through. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it's, it's a difficult task. Um, I was the holder in high school football, if you can. Uh, and that's, that was my only position. I ran out there to hold the, the ball for the kicker. We were terrible, but you know what? I at least I got out in the field, right? Um, another a- thing, Alyssa, another thing in your bio that popped out of me is your favorite TV show, Dexter. Um, do you, I mean, you may have even like put that in your bio like three years ago when you last <laughs> filmed it out, right? But yeah. you did at one point like that show. I binge watched all eight seasons of Dexter in a span of about three weeks last last March when we were all shut down. And I absolutely loved the show. Um, I, I mean, great choice of entertainment. So I definitely approve of that. You know, season nine is coming out in, I think, a month, right? Yeah, I saw that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. My mom, she hates scary stuff and I recommended it to her and she, even she loved it. So, yeah, my, my wife, she, she doesn't like scary stuff. So I had to go watch that downstairs <laughs> when, uh, when she was not in the room. So, um, I had to watch it alone, but Nicole, have you seen it? You've seen Dexter? It's, it's an amazing show. I, I love that show. Jillian, I got something for you to watch Dexter. I've never seen Dexter and I'm scared of everything. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not, uh, okay. It might be scary. And what is it know. about? Is it like jump scares? No, this, uh, this guy just is kind of, he takes care of people <laughs> to put it, to put it, uh, it's I not mean, scary. like PG. No, it's not, it's not scary. scary. It's like, it could be suspenseful, but it's like- suspenseful. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, Uh, it's about uh, someone who works in a lab at a police station solving crimes, but he also commits crimes himself when the justice system doesn't do justice. He kind of takes care of the justice. Perfect summary. (laughs) So it's it's a good one. I I recommend that one, especially with especially with season nine coming up. I'm interested to see because they pretty much wrapped it up after season eight. So. Mm Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how season nine turns out. Uh, Jillian, you list your favorite movie as Coraline. I had to Google it. (laughs) And and the second thing that popped up in that section that people also ask about Coraline is why, why is Coraline so creepy? And so it must be a creepy movie. Why is that your favorite movie? Have you like searched up a summary of it or like watched it? Uh, I mean, uh, not, not really. I I I, I just saw what came up on Google first and I called it good. Yeah. uh, Wait, have you guys seen it? Mark and Nicole? Kind of, but like, I think it's creepy. I don't know how you, how (laughs) you say you don't like scary stuff, but that thing's kind of scary. It's an animated film. So, Um, well, I just like it because. It's basically a girl who like lives or has two worlds and she just goes and meets her other mother and the other mother just like eats children. And <laughs> it sounds creepy, but it's not. It's a really good, it's really fun to watch. Like I, I watch it like probably like five times every year. So every year. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> not like five. I have it in 3D too at my house. What? And you put on <laughs> you put on the glasses to watch it? Oh boy. Okay. It's really I like it. Coraline. I have a doll. My mom bought me a doll once. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. 
Uh, Nicole, uh, you love New Girl. Uh, I have to agree with you because I love the show too. Every time Schmidt opens his mouth, I laugh. No matter what he says, it's just like I, I wish we were best friends, honestly. Uh, why is that your favorite show? It Okay, so in the beginning, in the first season, like even the first shows, they're just so like, they're very much like an upbeat show like you can watch it and just like laugh and it's just funny and also i think they casted the players that like the players oh my gosh i'm thinking of soccer they casted their cast extremely well like jess plays she does an amazing job as jess and like i don't know it's just such a fun show to watch like that i feel like it's very little shows that it's just like when you watch it they're just funny and like yeah it's just a fun show to watch i agree we would, we would have you know some i have some down days you know during the pandemic when you know things were we weren't doing anything and i'd throw on an episode of new girl and immediately better mood so mm -hmm. uh yes great show um all right, we're going to get into some trivia. Okay. You guys Yay. ready? You guys don't even know the, the, the topic and I'm sure you're so excited to find out. Right. All yep. right. But before I say what the topic is, uh, have you seen previous, uh, episodes of the broadcast where we have done trivia before? Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe not. If you haven't, I'm going to explain it right now in order. Uh, it, as soon as I, say the question in order to buzz in you need to yell your name and raise your hand at the same time okay so tyler kind of you know at the same time okay does that make sense all right and uh you must let me finish the question before you buzz in okay all right person with the most points well, I mean, it's just bragging rights because the points don't really matter. Just kind of like the show, whose line is it anyway? Yeah. All right. So the this battle is to see how well you know your teammates. All right. Okay. okay. All right. And these are all really based on uh, what they've put in their in their bios on their website. So it may not be the current things, and so don't cheat. Don't you dare like get on an iPad next to the computer and try and figure out you know, who each person is. Um, but you guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. First question. Which teammates wore side ponies in their headshots this year? Nicole. Oh. Nicole. Devin and Jenna. Very good. Yes. All right. Uh, keep score here, even though the points don't matter, right? <laughs> All right. Which teammate has pregame superstitions of writing head up on her knee, taping her right wrist, and playing with double socks? Nicole. I was a Nicole. Jess. Very good. I Jessica Yamas. What's that? keep forgetting my name <laughs> you're just me. i know you want to say your teammate's name probably as you're like trying to raise your hand yeah but yes yell your name first before you yell your teammates name which teammates favorite nfl team is the kansas city chiefs Chiefs. Favorite NFL team is the Kansas City Chiefs. Man, who likes football on the team? <laughs> She's not from Kansas City, at least as far as I know. Alyssa. Um, Alyssa Carvin? <laughs> no, it is not. Want to give us the position? Um... You know, <laughs> midfielder. She's out for the year. Jill. 
Shayna? Incorrect. Five, four, three, two, one. Katie Ching. Oh. <laughs> and she's from Seattle. So I don't know why her favorite team is not the Seattle Seahawks. And I'm from the Seattle area myself. So that's a little upsetting that she doesn't, that her favorite team is the Chiefs and not the Seahawks. Although last night's game was not necessarily a game that you want to be a fan of the Seahawks, but we will, we're not going to get too much into that. So yes, that was that was Katie Ching, her favorite NFL team. At least she lists it as the Kansas City Chiefs. I'll have to ask her why, because it doesn't really make a lot of sense being from Seattle. Anyway. Which teammate hates the beach? Alyssa. Alyssa. Uh, Allison Hung? No. I think she also does, though. <laughs> she might. There might be others that probably do, too. But this one, put it in their bio. Oh. Alyssa? Is that a question? No. Oh, okay. Me, again. Uh, okay. Sydney Common? No. I think you're 0 for 4. 0 for 3, <laughs> 0 for 4. No. Taylor Scott. What? What? She oh. she's put in her bio. She hates. She, likes the well, river. she said she dislikes the beach, but I just changed it to say she hates because it's about the same thing. <laughs> like, yeah. Which teammate claims she learned how to ride a scooter before she could walk by herself? We're really bad teammates. Though. You guys do not. Yeah, you guys got to do more icebreakers with your team. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Learned how to ride a scooter before walking? She claims that she, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't believe that. Cassie Snow. What? Uh, she may have just been trying to be funny. I don't know. But that's what she claims. <laughs> that's what she, that's what she claims. <laughs> Which teammate enjoys climbing trees? These are so random. Wow. <laughs> no, we don't call anyone. anyone. You guys got to read each other's bios. I know, we need to study them. Man. Um, Jacqueline Cuevas says she loves climbing trees. Dang, we need to ask her to climb one at practice. Maybe. Which teammate is a fan of the Milwaukee Bucks? Alyssa? Alyssa. Um, Caitlin Alexis? Very good. I was yes. Say. I was like, she's the only one that lives on this. She's the only one that lives in Wisconsin, yes. <laughs> All right. Nicole, you got two. Yeah. Alyssa got one. Jillian? Yeah, you're, five. You're, you're here. <laughs> Which teammate claims to have been a sponsored skateboarder for three years? Keep, what? Who's hiding this? Alyssa? Alyssa. Would that be Allison Hung? It would be, yes. Wow. Very good. I think she's the only one that can skateboard on the team. She claims that she's been a sponsor. She was a sponsor skateboarder for three years. She's gonna have to show us her tricks. Yep, she will. Which teammate has 38 first cousins? Nicole? Nicole. Is it Alyssa Carthen? No. Nicole? Nicole. Is it Phoebe? It is not. Dang it. Clarissa Sanchez. Oh, we should have done this one. Dang it. All right. <laughs> so we're doing so good here. I, this will be our last question. Which teammate claims they co own a juicing business called BJ Juice? 
What? I have a feeling this is kind of one that I, I don't know. Maybe well, an I'm underground sure. juicing I'm sure about it. <laughs> Dream Dream juice. juice. Must be an underground juice business. I don't know. I know. I'm gonna give them. I'm gonna talk to them about that today. <laughs> underground juicing business. Bridget Carbono says that uh, she co-owns a juicing business. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all I could really find. That was. That would be like specific to an individual. So congratulations, you guys. A good thing those points don't matter because uh, they they didn't get you very far. So yeah, sharing, uh, yeah. Uh, Nicole and Alyssa, yeah, you guys tie with two and, and well, Jillian, <laughs> maybe you score some points tonight to make up for it. How about that? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's women's soccer senior Alyssa Larkin and juniors Jillian Ortine and Nicole Villarreal. Thank you, everyone, for being with me. And uh, good luck tonight against Stanislaus State and on Sunday against Cal State East Bay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Mm-hmm. That'll do it for episode 15 of the broadcast. I want to thank Alyssa, Jillian, and Nicole for joining me today. We've got another busy weekend coming up in Bronco Athletics, and who better to tell you about it than our Assistant Athletics Director for Marketing and Promotions, Mike Farrell, and guest host, Beckett. Mike, what do we got going on this weekend? Friday night, which is actually tonight, the soccer teams are hosting Stanislaus State out at Kellogg Stadium. Women kick off at 4.30, followed by the men at 7. The 22nd ranked volleyball team is also home this weekend, hosting San Francisco State tonight at 7 in a battle for second place in the CCAA. This, this Then Saturday morning, the cross-country teams compete at the Pomona Pitzer Invitational over in Claremont before volleyball wraps up the day, taking on Cal State Monterey Bay at 7 p.m. in Kellogg Arena. The soccer teams then wrap up the busy weekend on Sunday, hosting Cal State East Bay as the women kick off at 11.30 a.m., followed by the men at 2 p.m. Also, next week is all about Broncos vs. Coyotes. Wednesday the 13th at 7 p.m., the volleyball team will welcome the 2019 NCAA National Champion Cal State San Bernardino to Kellogg Arena for a huge showdown of the nationally ranked teams. Then on Thursday, the soccer teams host the Coyotes for a CCAA doubleheader with the women kicking off at 4.30 and the men at 7 p.m. out at Kellogg Stadium. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Thank you, Beckett. All right. We'll see you out here a little bit later. Take care. All right. For a full schedule of upcoming action for CPP teams, head to broncoathletics.com slash calendar to find out more. For new episodes of the broadcast every other week, make sure to visit our website at broncoathletics.com slash podcasts and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at our handle CPP Broncos. Bi-weekly podcasts are also available for free download on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, TuneIn, and iHeartRadio. For everyone in the CPP Department of Intercollegiate Athletics, I'm Tyler Lobey, encouraging you to make it a great day. And as always, go green, go gold, go Broncos. (laughs) 